we are ruled over. As children, most of us learned a very rudimentary, stripped-down version of history in school, one that can be reduced to a singular overarching narrative that is as follows. In generations past, most people were subjugated by some form of a ruling class. Tribal leaders, kings, noblemen. From outright serfdom and slavery, down to monarchal rule, people were largely organized into those with power at the top extracting wealth and resources from those at the bottom struggling to scrape out a meager existence. This historical narrative culminated in the American Revolution when large swathes of people began throwing off those shackles of rule in favor of seizing control over their own destiny. And the lesson taught to us is that this subjugation was locked in the past, whereas now we are free, or freer, free to have agency in the pursuit of our goals. That most people, at least those living in more civilized nations, were no longer being ruled over. And that, I'm sorry to tell you, has become one great big lie. We are ruled over today, right now. And the proof of this fact is as simple as a single calculation. In America, there are roughly 132 million workers earning, on average, $59,384 per year. But among those 132 million, there are close to 3 million people who work for our federal government. Those people earn, on average, $101,610 per year. Since those 3 million federal employees are also counted amongst the 132 million American workers, you have to separate them in order to compare them. Once you do, the average American, non-federal employee, earns $58,438 per year. Look at these two salaries side by side. Would you guess that one of them works for the other? That one of them, in effect, pays their salaries and if you had to guess, whom do you think works for whom? Would you guess that these people, on average, enjoy a lifestyle far greater than that of their employers? Would you guess that they enjoy benefits and retirement plans that the majority of their bosses could only dream of? Now, you could argue that comparing the average of 3 million people against that of 129 million isn't fair. I mean, the larger group contains every minimum wage employee in the country, which would drag down the average, but it's also important to remember that same group also contains every single executive, CEO and billionaire, every megastar musician, athlete and Hollywood celebrity, meaning their exorbitant earnings would pull the national average higher. You also don't have anyone who doesn't earn any income, so there are no homeless or destitute people who make zero dollars and thus pull that average down. Whereas the three million federal employees, which doesn't have anyone to drag it down, but it also does not have a single millionaire, at least not in their salary. In fact, there is not a single person who earns even half a million dollars per year. As its highest paid employee, the president only earns $400,000. And still, when you put their averages side by side, it is demonstrably clear who is getting the better end of this arrangement. Our quality of life is tied to our income, and regardless of your views on economics, the government has a hand in the conditions by which our economy operates, and we are charged for that service through taxation by the government, the end result of which is that the lives of the people paying for this service are significantly worse than the people we pay to produce it. They are a class of people who are above us by any observable metric. We have no say in most of their hirings, firings, or compensation. We don't have a say in how many people need to be employed by this system or what they or it does. It can be increased at any time and for any reason, at our expense of course, and the only say we will have is who can approve its ever-increasing expenditures. It can be decreased, which it never will, because why would anyone willingly choose less for themselves? And we are forced to pay for all of it by national law and under threat of imprisonment. We are ruled over.